Welcome back to another ballistics gel test. Today we are shooting Federal Power Shock 100 grain in 243 Winchester. And here's the box for that Federal Power Shock ammo. Let's go ahead and take a look at the back. Here's your promo information. You can stop, pause, and read all that if you would like. Here is your velocity and energy info. It does not have a barrel length listed, so we'll see how close we get to 2960. Go ahead and take a round out, take a look at it. So I've already fired a few out of this box to zero my rifle to it, but it's got that blue lacquer sealed primer that Federal is, I don't know if, I don't want to say famous for, but they do that on all their ammo. It's a nice touch. Yank one out. There it is. It's just a classic soft point hunting load. And my test rifle today is my Winchester Model 70 Featherweight Compact, chambered in 243 Winchester, of course. It's got a 20-inch barrel. Up top, I've got a Leopold FX2 6-power scope. And coming on back, I've got one of my handmade leather cartridge cuffs. I've got 243 stamped right in it. Check out my website, masonleather.com. It will be linked in the description and the pinned comment. I would absolutely love to make you one. And coming over the other side, I've got my whitetail deer design. We'll be taking three shots from 100 yards, firing into 10% ballistics gel that has been calibrated to meet the FBI's ballistics testing protocol. And while ballistics gel isn't an exact proxy for big game, it does provide a repeatable medium through which to test various bullets and ammo against each other. After the shots, we'll examine bullet expansion, weight retention, penetration, and velocity. My goal is to provide hunters like you and I with the most objective information possible to help us make the best choice for our particular hunting situation. The ballistics gel in this video has been sourced from Clear Ballistics. You can find a link in the description. So let's go ahead and shoot it. And we are down at the blocks after shooting that Federal Power Shock 100 grain load out of the 243 and my table has seen better days i think this one has about kicked the bucket i'm gonna have to just break down and build a table or something because i can't keep going through these like anyhow we did manage to capture not only three but four bullets because i fired an extra shot just because the 243 is so much fun to shoot and it looks like our penetration this is actually two bullets right next to each other you know what we're just going to give it all 16 inches it's all right there so four bullets at about 16 inches a hair over very very consistent looks like they held together for the most part and expanded let's go back to the first block we've got wound cavity starting at about the two inch mark coming on back it tapers off right there about the nine inch mark so just about what you want for a white-tailed deer and we did see some fragmenting in here but it looks like they held together for the most part it'll be interesting to weigh them and see how much retained weight these little guys have and let's take a look at the velocities for that federal power shock 100 grain load out of the 243 our high was 2754 our low was 2688 going pretty slow and our average was 2724 and here we are looking at those 100 grain federal power shocks out of the 243 pulled out of the gel first we'll talk about weight retention and yes i did fire four bullets we're just going to go ahead and look at three because the fourth one was pretty much exactly the same as these three so weight retention wise we saw 49 49 and 51 grains so very consistent for an average of 50 grains retained weight and that is 50 percent weight retention this is actually one of what i would call the poorest showings for a federal power shock bullet that i've seen this is if i recall correctly this is definitely the lowest weight retention i have seen for a power shock bullet it is what it is now on to expanded diameter we saw 0.43 0.43 and 0.45 inches for an average of 0.44 inches expanded diameter that works out to 1.8 x expansion this is also one of the what you might call poorest showings for a federal power shock bullet that i have seen i think what we're looking at here is sort of the limit on the smaller diameter end of what the power shock design is capable of these bullets are just getting really small for a cup and core copper and lead bullet and they're having trouble holding together i think that's what we're looking at and now on to velocity we saw 2754 for the high 2688 for the low for an average of 2724 
versus the factory build velocity of 2960. So he came in 236 feet per second slow. No surprise, actually. The 243 Winchester is what's called an overbore cartridge. Basically, a whole lot of gunpowder pushing a small bullet. It really does need all the barrel length you can get to get the velocity out of it. And remember, my rifle has a 20-inch barrel. It's a compact rifle, so really no surprise here. And now on to penetration, very, very consistent, 16 inches across the board. This isn't the best penetration I've seen with 243 Winchester. We've gotten a few loads over 20 inches, some that are just basically brushing the 20 inch mark. This is, again, sort of one of the poorer performing loads I've tested in 243. All right, y'all, time for my final thoughts on the Federal Power Shock 100 grain soft point out of the 243 Winchester. We saw 50% weight retention and 1.8x expansion on average. That's actually the poorest performance I've seen thus far out of Federal Power Shock bullets. Now, some people say that Federal loads fusion bullets in some of their Power Shock line. I can't confirm that. Maybe that's true. Regardless, this is some of the poorer performance I've seen out of Power Shock. And I mean, I don't know, I'm just speculating here, but I think it just has to do with the size of the bullet versus how fast it's going. Even though these aren't going ultra fast, they're still going really fast. And I think it's just kind of reaching the limit of what you can do with a small cup and core bullet going this fast. We're just not getting that held together expansion or weight retention. And then velocity wise, we did come in quite a bit slower than factory spec, 236 feet per second slow to be precise. But that's sort of par for the course for the 243 Winchester when you're shooting it out of anything less than a 24 inch or longer barrel. The 243 is what's called an overbore cartridge, basically a cartridge that has a whole lot of gunpowder pushing a small bullet. It's a cartridge that can really use every inch of barrel that you can throw at it. And most 243s are 22 inch barrels, if not 20 inch barrels. I know a lot of people out there are using compact 243s for their kids or smaller statured people. My 243 is a compact rifle with a 20 inch barrel and I actually love it. So make of that what you will. The bullet's still going plenty fast, but you're just not going to see anything close to the factory spec. And now we'll talk about penetration. We saw 16 inches on average, very consistent for all three shots. And personally, I have killed deer with this load. I did get complete penetration, but it wasn't a super funky, ultra hard angle shot. With this particular ammo, I'm looking for a real solid broadside 90 degree shot, if at all possible. This isn't a load that I'm gonna wanna take a Texas heart shot with. And then real quick, we'll talk about kinetic energy. I'm rolling this into every video going forward with a 100 grain bullet going 2,724 feet per second on average, right there at the muzzle, we're looking at 1,648 foot-pounds of energy, which is right there in the ballpark of a lot of good medium game 243 Winchester loads that I've tested, and that's well over the 1,000 foot-pound threshold that people like to see for medium game. So what would I use this load for? As I mentioned, I actually have hunted with this load. I have actually killed deer with this load. You want to be careful the angle of the shot that you take because it's it's already starting out not a very huge bullet. It's just 100 grains. It doesn't have, you know, really deep penetration. So you want a good broadside shot with this stuff. It'll definitely kill deer. But what I personally use this load for is practice. It's affordable. Federal blue box tends to be really accurate stuff. And hey, if your rifle likes it, it'll definitely do the job on deer in similar size game. But I think there are some better options. That's just my opinion. If you've used this stuff on game, let me and everybody else know in the comments how it did. I have some big news. Lots of you have emailed me or commented how much value you get out of my videos. And you've asked me, how can you be a part of this and help support the channel? Well, I got to work and now I have a way. I've created a Patreon account where you can join me in helping our fellow hunters. Click the link in this video's description and watch my Patreon welcome video, where I describe to you how your help will impact this channel and our community of hunters as a whole. And when you join me on Patreon, you'll get a lot more than I can give you here on YouTube. You'll have to go watch that welcome video linked in the description to find out the details. I'll see you there. Hey, if you enjoy these videos, check out my website, masonleather.com, and get yourself some leather gear handmade by me just for you. I've been handcrafting leather gear for hunters for over a decade, and I would love to make you something. The link is in the video description. And check out my channel for more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests.